has said this is a private sector project. You have stated that you will fight this project. Can you speak specific and what you are looking to do? Well, I've gone on record opposing the project. I've even requested that the Attorney General um, give an opinion of whether the agreement that creates this project is legal or not. Uh, win, lose, or draw, I'm going to be at the Sebastian City Council uh, the day after the election. I think they're going to pick up my request and write a letter to Pam Bondi as well. I think it's fundamentally wrong for the Orlando Expressway Authority to dictate to this community how a rail system should run through our community. I am adamantly opposed to it. There's been some misinformation about this project and about me. Um, one is that we appropriated money for the Orlando Regional Airport terminal for all of Ward, Florida. We did not do that. That appropriation was there to serve SunRail and the light rail that goes toward uh, International Drive. Now, the Orlando Airport Authority would, and probably will, if it's approved, allow the All Aboard Florida folks to tie into that terminal from the airport. But that All Aboard Florida has not even been approved yet. And I'm hoping we can be successful in derailing All Aboard Florida and forcing the FEC, or maybe giving them the ability to sit down with our local communities and try to come up with a, with a project that is commensural and uh, beneficial to our local communities. And I say, allow them to, because again, we have a government entity, a government agency called the Orlando Expressway Authority that we can't vote on, we have no appointments to, dictating to us and saying, you can only run this train if you run it through Bavard and in the River, Martin, St. Lucie County, at 110 miles an hour, 36, 32 times a day, however many that is, you can't stop, you can't work out agreements with your local government officials. That's, that just is unacceptable. I have never supported such a, a, a train ever. Uh, I did support the high-speed rail that was proposed by a Republican chairman of the, of the House Transportation Committee that ran a, a, a high-speed rail from Orlando to Tampa in the middle of I-4. I applauded Rick Scott because he was able to negotiate an arrangement that would have not cost the taxpayers uh, any money. Uh, that federal dollars would not be matched for Brevard County taxpayers or the state of Florida taxpayers. That rail didn't happen, and I can understand why it didn't. There were some concerns, and I think they were reasonable. This rail is a bad rail, and we must stop it. Thank you, Ben. Well, I've written extensively on the subject. There's, a, in fact, on each table, there's a three-part investigative article that I wrote and published on uh, Space Coast Daily, and every one of the sources for the information in there is cited, so you can go look it up for yourself. Anybody who thinks this is a private company doing private business is, is being fooled. Uh, it's that simple. We are using tax dollars to fund a railroad going right through the middle of our town, that nobody in this district wants, that we're going to end up having to pay for, not just at the state level, not just at the federal level, but at our local level too, millions of dollars for every single one of the railroad crossings, and nowhere along the line were the public, were, were we the people asked about it, we were never brought into the subject, we were literally railroaded. And what I, when I say that, I mean, this project was never even supposed to go along the coastal route. It was supposed to go from Tampa to Orlando. That was phase one. And yes, you do like high-speed rail because you sued the governor over it, our governor, and I was offended by it. I think that, that is a way, that's the way you divide the party, not, not by having different ideas about how conservatism is, but by going and suing the governor of our own party. When you, when you insist that you want high-speed rail, you can't then say, no, I don't like high-speed rail. That was phase one of a project. Phase two of the project was supposed to go from Orlando to Miami. It was never supposed to take the route that it's taking now. It was supposed to track along the turnpike. I don't know when the change happened, but it did seem to be tied to this company, All of Work Florida and Florida East Coast Industries. And I obviously don't have a lot of time to go into the details of all of this, but I do encourage you to read up on the subject because we are not getting, this is not something that's a good deal for us. Thank you. Thank you. wrap it up, but I'm going to, uh, but uh, fairness, of course, is is the subject of the evening tonight. So uh, we're going to, uh, going to reverse it now on this one, and then we're going to move forward on a couple of other items pretty quickly. I'm going to change the time.
Yeah, I can't. Well, and, and again, I, I did write an article, and every single one of those things is outlined in the article. There are, I just did it again, didn't I? Sorry. All right, there's three things that are the primary, that are the primary subsidies. Number one, I don't care who the, I don't care who the station's for. If all board floor is going to be using it at a discounted rate, that is the very definition of a subsidy. Whenever the government pays for something that benefits a company or a group of companies, that is the definition of a subsidy. And I didn't want to really want a station in Orlando, and I certainly didn't want to pay for it. The second one was that there was a something called a TIGER grant. I have no idea what TIGER stands for, but it is written down in the article. It was about $35 million, and that was for the planning phase of Olive Ward, Florida, and it went through the Department of Transportation. They used this little loophole that saying, because it went through the Department of Transportation, that they say that they've never gotten any grants. It's a technicality, but whatever. The, the third thing that they're doing is that they are getting a federally subsidized loan. And again, federally subsidized loans are my dollars as well. They're your dollars as well. This is a problem for me because there is very little accountability and very little transparency in this process. My biggest concern about it overall was that somebody dared to ask them for their business plan. Well, now, if you want my tax dollars to be invested in your private project, then I want to see your business plan. You don't just get to get my dollars and then go, oh, gee, I'm not going to share that because that's like an, that would present some competitive issues. That is absolutely not okay. They were so against sharing their plan that they actually sued the guy who dared to ask for the plan, a private citizen of Florida. That is absolutely unacceptable. And if that's the kind of business that we're doing uh, business with, I have big concerns about that. The subsidy for the federal loan, it totals over the life of the loan compared to what they just got. They just got some private funding overseas. Uh, it comes up to about $3 billion in subsidies for them. Well, I'd love $3 billion in startup money for my business, too. But, you know, that's not the way it's supposed to work. Thank you.